Hey, Carlos Lago with Edmonds here. That is a 2021 Chevrolet Colorado ZR2 Bison. It's an off-road version of an already off-road capable truck. What is it? Why does it look so cool? How functional is it? Why should you care? And how does it land among the other midsize off-road trucks like the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon, the Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro, and the Ford Ranger Tremor? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video and more. But before we do, make sure to hit that like button and click subscribe if you like what we're doing. If you don't like, we're sure you're gonna leave a comment anyway. Also check out the links below to see more about this truck and others like it. And also be sure to visit edmunds.com slash sell my car to get an instant cash offer on your car, truck, or SUV. What is the Bison package? Well, it costs about $5,800 and it's available on ZR2s with the crew cab short bed or extended cab long bed configuration. It's made in collaboration with a company called American Expedition Vehicles or AEV, and they specialize in off-road overlanding equipment. Now for the ZR2, the package adds a bunch of protection, durability hardware, along with specialty bumpers and stuff. Uh, these 17 inch wheels, Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac off-road tires, but most importantly, a whole host of AEV logos on the bumpers, tailgate, and headrests, and floor mats, so you can show off to your friends. Oh. Whew. Get out, just doing some truck stuff. Oh. Yeah. All right, cool guy parking. Now our ziggurat of integrity isn't just for cool guy Mick parking. It's also a really good way to demonstrate the clearances and traction you have when climbing steps like this. And the Colorado was really easy. In four low with the front and rear diffs locked, this thing was able to climb up these steps really smoothly because the throttle control was really good at low speeds. Let's talk about the front. Now the big addition to this truck comes in the form of protection. This is all steel. And that is fantastic because when you scrape stuff, you don't want to damage your truck, right? Now, this front bumper is all steel and has a lot of nice additions to it. You have a provision for a winch on the front that's cleanly integrated. Chevy and AEV say that when you install it, it doesn't impede the cooling abilities of this truck. The downside to it though, is that because this protection is here, you actually have a worse approach angle than pretty much any of the off-road trucks in this segment. So that means you're more likely to scrape things, but because it's steel, kind of maybe doesn't matter. We noticed that approach angle difference when actually climbing these steps, because there was a point at the very beginning where we were about half an inch away from rubbing this skid plate on the steps. And uh, you know, again, this is all steel. The other nice thing about this bumper is you have big bright red recovery hoops at the front. Now, as we make our way around the side, we can see all the other protection that comes as part of the Bison package. Starting at the front, you've got that steel skid plate, which covers the oil pan and the front diff. There's more steel for the transfer case, steel for the fuel tank, and steel for the rear diff. You also have these long steel rock sliders, and the length of those is actually really impressive because you see a lot of rock sliders that end right at about the rear door. The problem with that is if you're actually using the rock sliders and relying on them because you're sliding down rocks, as soon as the rock slider ends, that rock is gonna give your bed a kiss and your bed doesn't wanna get kissed by rocks. Scooting back a little bit, you can see that we have picked up a tire off the ground and using our super scientific method of measuring articulation, that's about um, maybe two and one third Arnie's underneath that rear tire. We have nothing to compare that against right now because there isn't another truck here. But, but while we can see them, take a look at these shocks. Those look impressive, yeah? I was so busy talking about bison stuff that I forgot to mention these uh, spool valve multimatic shocks that come on all the ZR2s. I lack the ability to explain how they work succinctly on camera right now, but we'll talk about them more while we're driving. Hey, there's steel more to come, haha. Uh -huh. So rear bumper, all steel. Uh, this part as well as this protection bar, then there's also the trailer hitch as well. That's all really cool in terms of protection. Underneath this, you also have a full-size spare wheel and tire. That's really cool. You've got these attachment points for your D-ring or your shackle, whichever you wanna call it. Now, AEV also has additional upgrades you can put on this truck after you buy it. Uh, these little plates or these little pods here are for backup lights if you wanna get them. There's additional underbody protection specifically for the transmission. You can get a snorkel, you can get 35 inch tires. However far down this path you wanna go, they'll help you get there. I'm not actually sure I'm gonna do this. 
that going to support my weight? It is. Ugh. Remember when I said we didn't have a vehicle here we could compare the Colorado to? Well, I lied. This is a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon long-term test car. We use it as a support vehicle during off-road shoots. Now, we all thought the Colorado was really impressive when it climbed these steps and it got its rear tire off the ground by about two and one third Arnie's. Well, here's what a Wrangler Rubicon does on the same steps in the same position, approximately, uh, with the front sway bar disconnected, a feature that you only get on the Wrangler and the Gladiator. The Colorado put its rear tire about two and one third Arnie's off the ground. This is about a third of an Arnie off the ground. It's not a exact comparison, but hey, we're not in the lab. The Colorado ZR2 comes with a locking front differential. It and the Jeep Gladiator are the only trucks in the segment to do so. Why would you want that? Well, when you lock the diff, the front diff and the rear diff, it ensures equal power distribution to all four tires, improving traction. Why would you want that? Well, we saw an example of that on the Ziggurat of Integrity. It helps crawl up those uneven surfaces more evenly, but it also helps in extreme low traction surfaces like mud, which we happen to have in front of us right now. The park rangers actually advise that we don't drive through this mud puddle pool because they said it's deeper than uh, it looks. But I have problems with authority and I've also got a locking front differential, so we're gonna give it a try. The trick is to try to get some speed, even in low range. Speed is your friend in this situation. <laughs> That's why you get a snorkel, I guess, maybe? So that pedal probably didn't need a front locking diff, but hey, it was still fun. And that's why you do this kind of thing, right? Two wheel drive mode with a lock diff is also fun. So now that we've got this Colorado nice and muddy, let's do a little hill climb. Now, this hill isn't steep. It shouldn't be too challenging at all. And I'm gonna try to make it more challenging than it should be. We have all these tools at our disposal with regard to traction, but I'm actually gonna use the auto four wheel drive mode, which is kind of like an all wheel drive mode uh, to climb this hill. And I'm gonna engage the off road mode by hitting the button. And that's the only drive mode this Colorado has, which is actually kind of refreshing. So. Put it in drive and I'm gonna start climbing the hill. I'm intentionally gonna do it at a low speed. Speed can be your friend when climbing this stuff, but I'm again trying to make this more challenging to see what this truck can do when you do it badly and how much control it has. There's some pretty good sized ruts here, but that's why we got all that protection underneath. Let's see if I can just take a, a worse line. Okay, traction's on and we are stuck. Okay, for first rut. So let's try four wheel drive and then I'll lock the rear diff and see if that's it. There we go. Traction control is actually helping me climb, which is pretty cool. And I've picked up a tire. I might need to engage low. Nope, nope, traction control did it. Traction control got me through, that's really cool. The traction control, I could feel it uh, selectively applying brakes and traction to get traction to different tires. And, nope, okay, that's not gonna work. Let's put it in low range. Rear diff is still locked. And low range did it, no problem. And when I get to the top of the hill, I will call out, there's no forward facing camera on this truck. There's a rear facing camera, but not a forward facing camera. And the hood has a bit of a bulge in it. So I would appreciate being able to see over the crest of the hill like I can with some other trucks in this segment. But overall, um, pretty competent up that hill. So the Colorado, whether it's a ZR2 or the ZR2 Bison has a choice of two different engines, a turbo diesel 2.8 liter four cylinder or a 3.6 liter V6. We had the turbo diesel in our long-term uh, Colorado ZR2 test car and liked that engine quite a bit. This one, of course, has the V6. In terms of 
response, the engine feels and sounds kind of decently, if I'm honest, both in the way it responds when you hit the gas pedal and also with the sound it makes. Uh, but overall, it's a solid engine. Colorado ZR2 Bison has 5,000 pounds of max towing capability and about 1,100 pounds off the top of my head of payload, which are pretty strong figures. I like the fact too that the Colorado comes with the trailer brake control, so if you need to haul a trailer that has brakes on it, you have a means to control it. That's a nice addition. As regard to the rest of the truck, well, this is a pretty solid uh, rig otherwise. You can easily daily drive this car without a lot of complaints. Uh, credit that to the suspension control that you get from those spool valve dampers, which do an admirable job of delivering both ride quality on the street and control off-road. Uh, the impacts are far, far from abusive in this truck. The only real complaint I have with this Colorado with uh, driving it is the interior just kind of looks drab and you don't have a push button start so you get to hear your keys jangle uh, as you drive over bumps. But otherwise, this is a pretty compelling truck for what it gives you and what you want out of it. The Colorado ZR2 Bison delivers a lot of off-road features, specifically uh, protection and a front locking differential. And those are things you can't get on a Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro. And you can get this truck for less money than a kitted out Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. There are some downsides. The clearances certainly aren't best in segment and the interior is just kind of okay. But if you care about what the Bison delivers, you probably don't care about the interior. Now, the Bison package is certainly overkill for light off-roading, but if you're the kind of shopper who wants the kind of protection that this package offers and also a path to continue down should you want to go more aggressive in your overlanding adventures, this Bison package is a really compelling truck. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a comment and a like below and hit that subscribe button too while you're at it. Why not? Hey, it's free world, right? And also check out some of the links at edmunds.com for more information about these trucks and others like it. Now that we're done filming this video, I'm gonna go do some more donuts.